Good evening and welcome to episode 346 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamandungwa Kumalo. It is the Wednesday edition of the Private Property Podcast. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome to the family. You've missed out on a whole host of incredible episodes, so do make sure that you go to our Facebook or YouTube page or wherever you get your podcast, whether it's Spotify, of course, or uh, on the Apple uh, Podcast uh, platform then catch up on the great episodes that you have already missed out on. And so all our regular viewers on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, welcome back. You know how we do it. Every single weekday, you and I have an appointment at 7 p.m. where I'm always in conversation with the property expert who helps us make better property decisions. doesn't matter whether where you are in your property journey, we're certainly here to make it uh, better, smoother, and empower you to make better decisions. And Talking about empowering you to make better decisions, you can tune into a whole host of other shows right here across private properties, social media platforms every week day at 8 p.m. As it is a Wednesday, you can catch ST class in on the first time home buyers show later on, uh, which is always in conversation with people who've walked that first time home buying journey. And have gone on to grow their property portfolios from strength to strength. And of course, every Tuesdays and Thursdays, Umbali Nogwa brings you the farming podcast tackling all things agriculture. So if you want to you know, certainly get your green fingers working and understanding the business side of agriculture, that is the show that you want to tune into. And every Mondays and Fridays, Chad brings us the Home Shoppers show where he takes us through Exquisite properties that you can find on www.privateproperty.co.za. Uh, so do make sure to not miss that show every Mondays and Fridays. And of course, there's myself, Zamatongo Kumalo, every single weekday at 7 p.m. I am on your screens and always learning from each other across our social media platforms. And I already see some of the love that we're getting. I want to see who is present and watching, whether you're watching us on Facebook, on YouTube. Or of course, uh, on our Instagram page, do show us some love down here below. This evening, we are talking about the surge in upmarket retirement housing. Uh, and I know that, you know, whenever we talk about retirement housing, I always think, oh, gosh, I'm so young. That's not a thing you know, I have to think about. But the reality is we have family members who, you know, we have to always consider because sometimes uh, we may have to make those plans for them. And of course, some of us, are, some of you, let me not say some of us, I'm still quite young. Some of you are getting older and also looking at different ways to potentially change your lifestyle uh, the moment you are, of course, older. That's exactly what we're going to be looking at this evening. I already see some of the love. Uh, Vanessa Nell saying, hello, beautiful Zama. Ukamakhelo uh, Masola saying, evening fam. Uh, Varana Siddiqui uh, also watching, saying, evening fam. Uh, Vanessa Nell is also watching. And of course, a whole host of you um, on our Facebook page, Michelle Volmerans, Mohale Mohale, uh, sending those green hearts uh, on our Facebook page. So do keep the love coming. We absolutely love uh, to see it. I want to 
find out from you at home. I mean, is a retirement home uh, something that A, you would consider for yourself or you would consider, you know, for a loved one? And whether you have already, you know, started looking at retirement housing options and what have you found as you're doing your research? I mean, we've spoken about this topic before uh, on the show when we're just covering the basics of what we need to know when it comes to retirement housing. Well, to get us, uh, to help us get a better sense of this, you know, demand in the more upmarket retirement housing. I'm joined this evening by Gus van der Spach, who's the CEO at View Property Developers and the owner of, an, of the upmarket um, retirement estate, Waitham um, Estate. And uh, I think also later on in the show, as many of you know, as we're running our competition, uh, where you can stand a chance of walking away with 500 rands cash every single weekday uh, right here on the Private Property Podcast. We are going to be announcing who the potential lucky winner is. We didn't get a winner yesterday. We didn't get a winner uh, the day before. So we've got, I think it's now 2,000 rands. That's in the money bag. And I hope that the winner that we're going to call is in- indeed watching and will be able to claim their prize. And of course, do keep the comments uh, coming through. Have you ever considered, you know, going moving into a retirement home or even for your family? And have you started already having that conversation? We want to see those comments down here on our page. Gus, good evening. And thank you so much for joining us on the show. Evening, Zama. Thank you very much for having me again. You know, guys, I think before we even look at you know, what we should be asking for uh, and you know, some of the trends that we've seen uh, or that you've rather picked up when it comes to uh, the demand for retirement housing in general, I think first perhaps paint a picture of us around the difference between, I'll say, the, the sort of classic or standard retirement housing offers uh, versus the more upmarket ones. You know, what, what are some of the distinguishing factors? Because I think uh, with so many of us generally not being used to retirement housing, housing um, as much. We probably don't quite know what we would expect on the you know, h- higher end uh, when we look at this offering. Yeah, look, thank you. Uh, good question. And uh, I think uh, the, the whole industry has changed a lot over uh, the last sort of uh, 10 years. You know, we're looking at a lot at um, the sort of lifestyle estate is, is, is what uh, the, the, the product is uh, at the moment that, that is uh, very much in demand. Uh, you know, it used to be old age homes when sort of my granny was, was in a, uh, a place um, and then it turned into retirement estates. So now we're looking at uh, lifestyle living and lifestyle living is really around um, having a bouquet of services that um, and, and healthcare being sort of the central one of those that differentiated from a regular sort of block of flats or, 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 or development uh, estate. Um, it's got that sort of care um, uh, portion of it, but but people are demanding sort of or, or asking for a lot more than that nowadays, and and that's really being uh, provided for by developers as we look to differentiate ourselves from uh, other products in the market. Uh, there is, as you say, a sort of a, a, a drive nowadays towards uh, um, uh, this sort of uh, seniors living market where uh, there's a lot of housing coming online. Um, in, in, in this sphere and uh, the look is really to or the the, the the drive is really to provide uh, services that people need um, in a centralized uh, eat and uh, have care um, and socialize with their friends and, and that sort of thing all within the same area so so nowadays, uh, sort of differentiators are shuttle services. Um, you know, there'll be a, a tennis court or, or something on, on the grounds, um, uh, high, sort of uh, high-end food, um, uh, health care that's, that's obviously provided as part of your, your package. Those are, are all things that are, are sort of seen as the standard. Um, and then, and then uh, yeah, it, it depends. Uh, different developments are, are offering uh, different services. In our place, we've got a hotel now. So if you've got family and friends coming to stay, uh, there's a hotel for them to stay. Um, and we've got laundry. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a whole uh, range of, of new services that are, that are being um, sort of provided. It, it's like living in a, um, in a hotel, but not a hotel. Yeah, it's, a, it's a home. Uh, but you're getting a lot of the hospitality services that you would have got, uh, you know, that you would normally get in, in places like that. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I think one of the, the key things that are already just jumping out is that you're certainly going to be living a very soft life uh, in your old age. And mm-hmm. I can imagine a lot of people, you've worked really hard. Uh, by the time, you know, the kids are, are gone, you probably have grandkids. And also don't want to be a bother, right? Because I think one of the reality is that sometimes your know, kids can be spread out across the country or across the world. And so being able to have some of these services uh, where you live certainly does become a, a very big perk. And so, Gustin, what would you say is the, um, you know, what are some of the Welcome back to episode 346 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamanto Mwakumalo. It seems the long weekend uh, gremlins are already at it. Uh, that's what I'm going to blame it on. Uh, there, as of course, I got cut off. I think that the gremlins are excited. They're looking forward to the long weekend uh, and and uh, and want to stop our buzz. But of course, we're not going to do that. We're still going to be uh, looking at the surge in upmarket retirement housing, my guest. This evening is Gus van der Spak, who's the CEO of Aview Property Developers. And before that interruption, uh, Gus, I was asking you around some of the trends that you've you know, seen when it comes to uh, retirement housing. And this is from sort of the standard offering that we have in the market right up to the high end offerings. Uh, so, yeah, some of the trends are, are definitely uh, more of a centralized um, uh, uh, collection of, of uh, services, um, you know, the uh, not leaving the, uh, the, the, the development, um, I think, over this lockdown period and COVID has, has definitely focused people on, um, you know, living in, in, in these communities. I, I suppose it's always been about a community of people, I, I suppose. That is really one of the key focal areas of of a uh, retirement development. As people get older, um, their worlds get get a bit smaller, and uh, and and people look for the companionship that uh, that these places provide. So, you know, building on that, um, there's there's a lot of um, community uh, organisations that that come out of out of these places. My folks have just moved into one, and you know, my mom's already joined the gardening club and the knitting club and uh you know so those are all the all the the the, the sort of sideline things that aren't advertised in the brochures but are definitely very much a part of these uh these uh 
you know, societies that that uh, that come together in in these kind of places. You know, I always say to people, it's uh, you know, you're back to your student days, uh, just with with some more disposable income because you know you're living in a a, a collection of people together um uh where you see your friends every day uh, but you don't have the the, the uh, um, sort of hassle of having to study for exams so yeah i think it's a it's a yeah. very uh, uh social social place and, and and that's definitely one of the, the things that are coming out of it so you know the trends uh definitely focus around building on that so um you know we we're seeing uh uh, developments where there's a, a shuttle service and when the flowers come out in Cape Town then everyone jumps in the shuttle bus and and go up to to see the flowers so those are the sort of things that are uh, community-based uh, uh, projects that that and and services that are coming out Mm-mm-mm. and of course I want to find out from you at home uh, whether you've considered uh, you know, retirement, housing, retirement, living, whether for yourself or for your parents. And I think what are some of the things that uh, you're, you know, that, that are going through your mind as you're making these considerations, especially if you're planning on on taking up the offer for your parents? Um, I think many of us are still very young and, and don't quite have to think about it for ourselves, but we do have loved ones who would potentially, you know, benefit from, um, you know, living in a retirement uh, estate, really, because as, as Gus has painted out, it, it is a whole experience. It's a lifestyle offering. And there are so many different ways that you know, the loved one would be almost reinventing themselves, really, uh, in those particular communities. I, I see here, Balisa, on our Facebook page, Balisa Solane saying, you know, I'd rather take care of my mom, um, Kazi Maubet, saying that they would. Um, and that is that they would, uh, you know, opt for retirement living. Um, Kazi also said that they'd probably consider it for investment opportunities. Uh, so not just for, you know, living there yourself. I saw Matha Shingange, one of our top 10 gang members, and of course, you know, who regularly stands in when I'm unavailable, saying that, uh, you know, 50, it seems like retirement is the new 50. So there are different kinds of offerings that you can look forward to, even in that space. And I think it speaks to what Gus was saying, that uh, it's almost like varsity life, except you don't have the stress of, you know, exams, and having to meet you know, assignment deadlines, which of course we know, we all know how angst inducing um, those tend to be. I want us to go for a quick break. Do keep the comments and certainly questions coming through. I want us to see who is going to walk away with this 2,000 rands. I see a lot of you commenting about how much money is now in the money bag. I hope that whoever walks away with the money is indeed watching and can walk away with the 2,000 rands. Let's see who this evening's lucky winner is. And the lucky winner this evening on our competition that we're running on our Facebook page is Ufulufelo Michelle Hope. Uh, Ufulufelo Michelle Hope. I do hope that you're watching. 2,000 Rands is up for grabs uh, and, of course, in the money bag. So if you're watching, drop us a text down here below so you can claim that 2,000 Rands. I know a lot of people uh, in the comment section was just saying this is so much money that they would absolutely love it. And if anything, it's a it would be a great kickstart to the upcoming long weekend. Uh, if we have a rollover by the time we, we come to the long weekend, uh, we'll see how much money we have in the money bag. Of course, we are talking all things upmarket retirement housing this evening, the offering, what you should be looking for, and some of the mistakes to avoid. And that's exactly what we're going to be exploring now I'm in conversation with Gus van der Spack, who's the CEO at View Property Developers. Now, Gus, when we look at particularly the upmarket uh, retirement uh, you know, housing offerings, what are some of the mistakes as, you know, consumers should we avoid making? And and especially as we are planning, whether it's for ourselves or for our loved ones, because I think this is one of those things that more often than not, you probably only do once, right? It's not like buying a house where you might probably buy it a couple of times and change it. This isn't quite one of those instances. So what are some mistakes uh, should we be careful of and certainly try avoiding? Yeah, so uh, obviously some of the the, the mostly monetary things uh, are, are the the ones that jump out. Um, 
uh, when you're comparing levies uh, between uh, different uh, developments, so you know we see a lot of clients that are shopping around. They they're looking at a few different places. I always say uh, compare apples with apples. So you know really look down into the levy um, and see what services you're getting and what it replaces uh, the cost that it replaces in your life right now. So if you're living in a house and you know you. Uh, um, you know, there's a ADT or, or whatever. You know, if you move in somewhere with centralized security, uh, you're going to replace that cost with with a different cost. Um, and 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 then look across all of the different uh, offerings that you have. Put in a sort of a spreadsheet or something, and and uh, and and build out that cost to make sure that you understand exactly what each development is offering you. Because often there are things that are hidden away, not purposefully, but 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 are are excluded from certain uh, developments, which you will then have to pay in for later. So you want to really find out what the worst case scenario is uh, in terms of what it's going to cost you to live somewhere. Uh, retirement developments generally are cheaper to live in because there's a collection of people paying for uh, a set of services than living in, in a house and getting that same services. But really try and understand uh, the levy. If someone says, look, my levy is you know, 3,000 Rand a month and the other person says, my lady, 7,000 Rand a month. Generally, it's not because one person's just cheaper than another. It's because there's a different set of services that you get for that levy. Um, and then the other thing is, um, I would say, you know, we deal uh, a lot with people that are uh, qualifying ages is, is from 60. Uh, some places are 65. Um, and and they, they, you know, 60-year-old uh, is a young person uh, still uh, with with a long time left uh, to live um, and so people consider the change now and what they need in their life right now but uh, when you do are making this move project that 10 years ahead and then project another 10 years ahead from that and then project you know so um, you need to make a decision that's a 20 year decision uh, if you're 60 or if you're 70 a 10 year decision or you know, depending on 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 how long you sort of you know planning on living, but you know, like people, it, it it is a a longer sort of decision that you need to make. So don't make it for today; make it for ten years from now. Uh, so I would say that's mm. that's very much something you need to consider. Things like living near your kids becomes more and more important uh, the older you get, and so uh, the ideal of retiring to a beachside town. Um, might seem like a great idea when you're 60, but when you're 80 uh, and driving uh, and, and, and longer distances becomes a problem, then, uh, then, then all of a sudden that decision wasn't the best decision. So um, I think it definitely should be something you consider uh, the longer sort of future uh, when, when, when making that call. Mm -mm -mm. And I see that our winner, Fulu Fellow Michelle Hope, is indeed on the live watching. She's uh, dropped messages down here below claiming that two thousand rands. Uh, congratulations okay. to you, Fulu Fellow, uh, you for of course, firstly entering the competition and uh, being and, and watching us live so that you're able to claim the money. Uh, and if you want to be just like Ufulu Fellow, all you have to do is to comment on the pinned post on our Facebook page and you stand a chance of walking away with the 500 grand cash that we give away every single evening uh, right here on the show live. And so do make sure that you keep commenting and you, your name might be one of the names that gets uh, called up. And just like Ufulu Fellow, all you have to do is to drop us a text down here below to claim your money uh, and for the fellow remember to slide into our dms so we get your details um so that we can make sure that you get that cash uh you know guys as you we were speaking i think one of the things that i came up for me was then what are some of the best ways to prepare right so i mean we, we, we're we're now fairly clear on some of the mistakes we want to avoid the the big thing being get a good sense of finances uh and i think that's one of the things of course, even at that age, you don't want to get wrong, especially because you would have worked all your life and, and you now want to not have best, you know, practices, so to speak, or some of the best, some of the things that you should do to best prepare, um, you know, before you obviously either buy into the retirement home, at which age should we start, you know, preparing uh, as we make that consideration of moving from a ever kind of 
home or house rather or property that you're living in into Yeah, Zama, um, I, you know, I think the last time I was on the show with you, we were speaking about, uh, you know, being financially prepared. And, and that really is a uh, such an important um, concept to grasp when you're younger um, of, mm. of, of saving for, for, for your retirement. Um, I think uh, working, uh, working into your 70s is, is not everyone's plan, um, but some people have to do it because, uh, because they haven't prepared sufficiently so um start early you know i think that's probably the best advice i would give my 18 19 year old self or whenever i was 19 when i started working my first job you know um is take 10 percent of your salary and and put it in a savings account it's amazing what you can do uh with time uh, and time really creates money um it's it's people save themselves rich you know um it's it's a real mm -hmm. concept i mean i've seen people um that i know that that haven't earned huge salaries but they've been big savers and and they've, they've secured their futures at 65 uh you know they can safely retire and 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 uh, and live their life on their own terms at, at that point so yeah um i think uh the, the other thing to consider is that we're all living longer nowadays so um you know if you uh, prepared to uh, sort of, you know, your timeline is to eighty. Uh, you might live to ninety. You might live to ninety-five. So, so these are all things that uh, that that are difficult to sort of uh, conceptualize when you're younger. But uh, I think you can give yourself a big head start by starting early um, and and putting some money away and don't touch it. Put it somewhere you can't touch it, and then uh, and then just keep on putting it there. And it's amazing uh, what what will build up and. And it's like one of those things, you know, you you start off small uh, and it doesn't seem like much, but when you look back in a couple of years, um, there's a significant part of money and then it becomes a challenge to build it up even more. And what I've seen with my with my mother is a big saver and uh, and and she now doesn't want to ever touch that part of money. So she's now uh, very reluctant to 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 start uh, looking at it. But but you know, I think it's she's been a very good sort of. Uh, example for me to follow in, in 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 that sense of 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 just squirreling money away every month it, it becomes a sizable uh, sizable investment at some point but uh yeah so that's that's one of them um you know uh some of the other things you can do uh, in terms of retirement um there's been a scarcity of of retirement developments um across all fields you know from from uh, the sort of entry level uh, through the mid range uh, to 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 the higher end there's there's been this sort of lack of of uh, of of sufficient uh, units um so you always hear about these um uh, uh, waiting lists to get into retirement developments and uh, my sort of advice would be if you are living in an area find your local um uh, uh, retirement developments and put your name down you know there's nothing uh, there's no harm in it. There's no cost in it. Just put your name on the list. You're generally going to get an update every now and then of what units are available. And when the time comes, then you'll be ready for it. Um, you know what you're looking at. You've educated yourself uh, in the offering. You've watched the prices over time, so you know what you can afford. Uh, so, so start looking at these things earlier rather than later. Um, it's not all dreary. It uh, doesn't have to be considered the last move. Uh, you know, it, it really is just preparing yourself for a certain phase in your life uh, where mm. uh, you need a collection of services that they, these, these developments provide. Mm -mm -mm. Gus, before I, I, I let you go, I mean, I saw the, the great news that you know, have you, have you property developers are going to be recognized at a very prestigious uh, you know, awards, uh, the Arabia Property 2021 Awards. Tell us a little bit about the awards and, of course, what you are going to be uh, recognized for next month. I know that the event will be taking place virtually next month. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. It's always great seeing you know, South African uh, companies and projects getting recognition in in, in award ceremonies that aren't just local but of course have uh you know international people also coming in at international projects uh so can you tell us a little bit about the work that you're going to be recognized for and a little bit about the awards yeah sure um we were contacted uh during the course of last year um by the international property awards who had come across our development and uh 
but we had a chance of of uh, of doing okay in in the in the uh, in the award ceremony. We put together a sort of an entry pack, um, and uh, we heard the good news the other day that we played in the Africa and Arabia um, uh, region, uh, which is which is the start of the competition. So so we've we've uh, won a prize there for um, a residential development um, of the year, and also. Um, our website uh, uh, won a, an award there as well. And basically what happens now is we go into the next round, which uh, uh, groups all the regions together and there's sort of a, a world uh, number one uh, that will come out of it. Um, and uh, so that all happens on the 7th of October. It's a virtual. They used to have the uh, big award ceremony in Dubai, but obviously with COVID and, and that sort of thing, uh, it's all being held on online now. But uh, yeah, it really... Uh, you know, it's it's been sort of three three and a half years of of a very high intensity uh, uh, of of development on and and keeping this thing on track and learning about the business and you know you're not just developing uh, a housing project there's there's a human element to it where you know you've got these social mm-hmm. elements and food and uh, cleaning and so you're sort of building a hotel and a hospital and a development all in one so. Um, to be recognised for that uh, is definitely, uh, you know, uh, makes it all sort of worth it at the end of the day, all the hard work that, that we've put in. And uh, I'm just happy for my team who have, you know, uh, mm. sort and of I think uh, gone above and beyond. The best for- Sorry, I missed you there. Mm-hmm. I think, I mean, certainly congratulations firstly uh, to you and your team and looking Thank you very much, to the seventh. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the seventh to see how you fare with the, you know, with the rest of the international community. Thank you very much. Um, in the awards. We're going to leave it there this evening on the Private Property Podcast with myself, Uzama Duma Kumalo. Gus, thank you so much for joining us on the show. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much, Uzama. Always good to chat. And that is Gus van der Spack, who's the CEO of Evview Property Developers, wrapping up the Wednesday edition of the Private Property Podcast with myself, Uzamantungwa Kumalo. Congratulations yet again to Ufulu fellow Michelle Hope for walking away with that 2,000 rands. Uh, we're back to 500 rands in the money bag tomorrow. Uh, very excited to see who's going to to win uh, tomorrow. I do hope that they're going to be watching and to claim their prize. Remember, if you want to participate, comment in the post that is pinned on our Facebook page to stand a chance of walking away with the cash prize. That's it from myself. I'll be back on your screens tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm, we've got a, a recess at school, so I'm certainly able to be on the show on a Thursday. So I'll be on the screens tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. And of course, it is a Wednesday, so you can catch the first time home bar show with SD Clarkson at 8 p.m. Until then, hoping you stay home and stay safe.